My name is Andres, and I'm a gatekeeper. So what is a gatekeeper? A gatekeeper is someone who challenges another member of the fandom, typically on their knowledge on the fandom in question. Almost everything can have gatekeepers, from music and films to video games. Everyone is particularly knowledgeable on at least one thing they enjoy. What separates them from gatekeepers is how aggressively they conduct themselves online. For the sake of this video, though, I will be focusing on the gatekeeping phenomenon associated with science fiction and fantasy fandom in particular. I did a lot of research to see what other people had said about the phenomenon, and discovered a lot of dismissive armchair psychology, suggesting everything from insecurity to identities built around liking something. I can't vouch for every instance of gatekeeping, but I'd argue that the reasons might actually be generational. The world was a very different place before the 21st century for nerds. If you grew up in the 90s or earlier and liked anything from superheroes to role-playing games, you were mocked and bullied for it by your peers. It didn't matter how old you were either. Being a nerd was frowned upon and uncool. This affected these previous generations twofold. They became hardened by this societal rejection, becoming very protective of these properties they'd been picked on for enjoying. They enjoyed the escape from more mundane things that everyday people were enthusiastic about, like sports, and formed tightly knit groups with like-minded peers. Everything changed in the mid to late 2000s, though. There was a nerd renaissance of sorts at the hands of the massive runaway success of films like The Dark Knight, the arrival of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, shows like Battlestar Galactica and Doctor Who premiering, and the gradual evolution of gaming, from arcadey platformers for kids to more ambitious interactive stories aimed at older audiences. Suddenly, being a nerd wasn't the butt of jokes and sitcoms. It was okay to enjoy these things. This is where the generational rift originates, though. After spending decades of being ridiculed and harassed for liking these things, the floodgates were opened and enthusiasm for these properties spread like wildfire. This also led to a problem I touched on in my video on Doctor Who, which was studios watering properties down for mass appeal at the turn of the century. Things that previous generations were picked on for enjoying were suddenly changed to appeal to the very people who picked on them, and they were what studios thought modern audiences would like instead of what those properties actually were. A lot of fans felt betrayed, especially with these newer fans shrugging off the franchise-building versions of these properties. This is where this civil war originates, and one of the reasons people complain about toxic fan bases. They see the popularity of these properties and ask these gatekeepers, aren't you happy? The things that you like are more popular than ever. Not understanding what previous generations went through for liking it, as well as failing to understand that a lot of the time these gatekeepers are trying to steer these newer fans towards better iterations of these franchises. Now there's more than enough room in every fandom. To be clear, I do not advocate harassment or bullying of any kind. All are welcome, of course. When people say that shows like Star Trek The Next Generation are old and boring, though, I am forced to bite my tongue to avoid saying, yeah, it's a litmus test to keep normies out. It's a very complicated and ongoing situation, one that I'm not sure how to resolve. Hopefully this video helped provide a little insight, though. Until next time.